Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. It's pot watering day today, and even though it is, I can see by having a quick scan round that there's quite a few that are going to get missed out. Um, it, it just is that time of year. Um, I don't like leaving my frequency too long because there will be some pots that will have dried, um, and I don't like them staying dry for too long. Um, this time of year with the low temperatures, it's not bad for a short period, but um, there's very little in pots that need to be dry for any length of time. You know, it's most, mostly the Oncidium Alliance and um, a, a smattering of other stuff. Um, but I've had an idea that I'm going to try and now do. Uh, it's a sort of from now on. Um, <clears throat> whenever I take my stills, which I use as pop-ups, you know, when I'm talking about a particular plant that's not in bloom, I can then use that still as a little pop-up in the corner, which seems to work quite well. But what I've never done is taken a picture of the whole plant when it's in bloom. So there's never an impression of the scale of the plant, the size of the plant, the condition of the plant. All that sort of stuff is just missed out by purely photographing the blooms, even though those pictures are nice, I like them. So I'm going to start building up a separate collection of stills where I can, based on a picture of the whole plant when it's in bloom. Um, I think that might be of use. Um, and they're the sort of pop-ups, if I use them, that just putting a picture up in the corner of the video won't work very well, so I'd probably have to impose the whole picture on the video, so there will be like a little break in the video while the still shows. But I think it's worth getting a collection together of that sort of thing. Now this will have to evolve over many years, obviously. <laughs> um, literally, because some plants literally bloom once a year, and sometimes for quite short periods. Um, but I'm going to make an effort to try and get pictures of the whole plant where possible, and I have to add that um, bit in at the end because some plants are just so big that in the confines of this grow room it would be almost impossible to get a still of the whole plant. It's just too big. I can't get far enough back. I'll be halfway across the lounge here. <laughs> but I'm going to attempt to try and start doing pictures of whole plants. And as I'm going round today, um, I've, I've, I've got some things I need to do and time is getting on. Um, I've got a talk to do, not to an orchid society, it's to a horticultural society, and that, that's in February. Now, it might sound a long way away, <laughs> but to get a talk together, it, it, you know, it's going to creep up on me. And that's just a general talk on looking after the sort of orchids that people might have that are not orchid people. You know, so the store-bought Phalaenopsis, perhaps an odd Oncidium Alliance thing, and... Um, it's supposed to last an hour as well. So I volunteered to do a potting demonstration as part of that talk. So I've even got to take some plants along and some media and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's going to be a bit of a nuisance talk. Um, but I do get paid for it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's worth doing. And it's not too far from home. So I, I, I got volunteered by... Uh, a couple of people at the Orchid Society who volunteered me to do this talk as a request from the horticultural um, group that meet up once a month. So we've got that to come. I've got my dendrobium talk to do, which I need to start getting some clips together for. And at the moment, I've actually got one, two, three, three Latoria types in bloom, one and two about to bloom. So I want to try and get like a group clip of those while they're in bloom. So, um, and all of those are in pots. Well, one's mounted, but the, the rest are in pots. So, you know, I've, I've got a fair bit of filming work to do. Um, what I'll probably do is, as I'm filming for various reasons today, I can always butcher the clips together to make a video for YouTube. So uh, it'll be a bit of a mix, but that's the plan for today anyway. So, uh, and it looks like we've got a bright sunny day, so I've got the light in here. And I need to take advantage of that because it looks like this is the only nice day we're going to get for some time again. It gets a very cold start, quite a hard frost. You can probably see the white on the shed roof. And um, 
it's then going to go back to wet and windy. So there goes the light, you know. So f filming at this time of year, I have to take advantage of the light. So I've got a hell of a mixed day today. And um, well, basically, I need to get on with it. Um, the other thing, uh, uh, in the um, <clears throat> description of this video, I'm going to put a link to a video that somebody gave me the link to in a comment on my previous video and it's basically one of the best quality videos of an orchid show I have ever seen. I mean this is a massive show but um, it's quite a long video but if you're interested in seeing probably the world's most spectacular orchid show um, take a look and it's a very well produced video. Um, so take a look at that. And in the meantime, I'll get cracking. A little bit of sad news. We've had this in our shot for so long now, it's like part of the furniture. But as you can see, the first bloom, top left, is just starting to go. Now this spike opened over a period of about 10 to 12 days, I think. So that's how long it will take to fade once the first bloom goes. So we've, we've probably only got about a fortnight left of this beauty, which will be a shame and it will be sorely missed. But, um, you know, now might be a good time to try and get a still of that plant. But think about it. <laughs> it's going to be very difficult to get that whole plant in a, in a shot with a DSLR. Um, very difficult, you know, I've, I've, I've got roots and plant and then spike hanging off to the side. So, you know, that. anyway, I'm, I'm going to try and do some of those shots today while I've got blooms on some of the plants because uh, there are quite a few fading. The old uh, Soto Anum is uh, not long for this world now as far as the blooms are concerned. Oh, and my little um, recently acquired twinkle crossed back with Soto Anum is opening. I haven't had a chance to have a proper look at this yet. Oh look, I can just about catch a little bit of light there. Now these are tiny little blooms um, and I won't be able to do a close-up. Um, I'll do what I normally do, start a long way away and bring the camera closer and closer until at such point it will go out of focus. But um, we'll see how close we can get before it disappears and into a blur. That's not bad. And these are attractive blooms. They're going to be fragrant, but um, the, you know, the inside of these blooms is absolutely stunning. It's like a mixture of um, red and yellow, quite bright, and a lovely sort of peachy color, peachy pink, I suppose you could call that. And although I know the camera doesn't pick these sort of things up, it's sparkling in the light. Looks like somebody sprayed tiny little glitter all over it. So th this is good. This is beautiful. So I'm pleased. And that was a present. That was a gift from um, Christine, a member of the Orchid Society. When I went to Rithlington, obviously I had to organise the mini bus and get everybody on it and count them all on, count them all off, all that sort of stuff. So this was a present for organising the trip. So um, greatly appreciated. And these are stunning little blooms. And uh, probably too soon to get the fragrance yet, but it will come. You know, it's, uh, Twinkles are fragrant, and the um, Oncidium Sotoanum that we've just looked at is highly fragrant, so these will be fragrant. And it's got a good number of spikes on the plant, um, a good number. So we've got lots to come here, but these are the first to uh, break open. Right, I've got work to do. <laughs> I'll add some clips on the end of this um, to take it up to a... Well, not too long, but uh, and I got to get the DSLR out and um, you know get my black cloth set up and all sorts of stuff going on today. So it's going to be a long day for me, but I'm going to treat it as a plodding day, not a rush. I've got nothing else to do today apart from work out here, so uh, we'd better start. I thought I'd better film this one. Um, it has got more buds to come. But at the moment it's the only bloom and I really can't remember how long it lasts. So I thought we'd better catch that while it's, uh, while it's open. Um, that is now how it opens. The, um, the top sepal does curve over the top um, 
the other three and the two petals go flat. Um, so it does open quite flat. Um, but as a Sologeny bloom, it does actually open up quite well. And that is um, Sologeny Moriana Magnifica Brockhurst. And it was an awarded plant, so, and quite honestly, you can see why. And it's just a stunning bloom. Large, too. I'll catch these two as I go past, as there's something to say about each one. This is the Miltonia Sunset that had quite a bad dose of Fusarium, and um, I videoed the treatments. They're all in a separate playlist if you want to have a look. But um, looking at the size of the new growths when, when that treatment was done a while back, not, not too long ago, these new growths are now pushing on quite well. Yeah, So I'm pretty confident this is going to recover. We've got three pieces in there effectively, all of which have two bulbs and a new growth. Um, it's in a nice confined pot. The new growth should start their new roots soon. Um, it did that all the pieces had some roots, but not brilliant. And this is um, uh, some Miltonidium, although I think that's changed. Um, but it's Peter Comp. And this, this is going to be out of the pot. It's two pieces in a large pot. Now, I've really got it in my head now. I do not want any of my Oncidium Alliance in large pots. They don't seem to grow such good roots. They can grow into a larger pot, but not starting out. Now, both of these pieces have already got some aerial roots, but just checking at the base, we've got a new growth starting here. So um, we'll have that out. And the new growth on here is, is just showing as well. Yeah. So both these pieces are coming out of the pot. Clean the sheaths off. Um, the reason for that is that um, in ideal conditions with the relevant humidity and everything, um, these sheaths would probably stay quite soft and allow roots to push through them. But in a uh, not perfect environment, the sheaths can get quite hard and woody and they will force roots to grow upwards like this. And then they never reach the media and they normally end up just drying off and dying so that they, they serve no purpose so get these sheaths off so that's a kitchen time so that can go to one side now this is another one off out into the kitchen um, this is one of my sherry babies and um, as you can see it's right on again this is two pieces this is something i won't do in the future but um when you take older bulbs off of a large plant because there's just too many hanging around, you often end up with two pieces because you take away the piece where it branched, leaving two pieces. So that's what happened here. But I've got a nice new growth coming on this piece. Um, and this is a relatively new growth. Um, this is its new growth, in fact, starting to mature. I don't know whether it's going to bloom or not, it may do, um, but the important thing is around the back. So the reason this is going out in the kitchen is, although that's not soggy, it needs coming off. And um, quite honestly, on this particular piece, I think all three of these bulbs are on this piece round here. So I want to get this out and get it into two separate small pots and clean up the back end and get the sheaths off so any new roots can come down in the pot. So that's another one out for the kitchen. It'll, it'll just be one session when I do it and it'll be quick. <laughs> I thought we'd have a look at this one because it never gets filmed because it lives right up the back of the shelf. Um, I think this is Chrysotoxin. Yeah, Dendrobium Chrysotoxin. Um, this particular plant comes from an area that would get a wet dry season. Yeah, no, not a wet dry cycle, a wet dry season. Um, and at this time of year, this would not be getting a lot of hydration as such. Um, it's not a true winter rester. It's not one of those that you completely withhold water from, but you can reduce it right down. And how much feed you would give it would purely depend on its state of play. Now this pushed up three new growths, major disturbance because it got repotted. Um, didn't have an excellent root system when, when it was repotted, but it's made up for that this year. I'm more than happy with its root system now. Um, but this was a new cane. That's a bit shorter than it should be. And these two are new canes, also a bit shorter than these. 
but I know this plant was grown in lower light levels than it would normally require, which would end up reaching for the light. So I think these canes are a little taller than, than what I would expect to get in the future, and this may be more like it. Um, but I'm hoping this is going to bloom well. Um, the older part of the plant was taken off and attempted to recover, and the only new growth it pushed up um, died effectively and it had no roots so I, I decided to discard it. Having two that big was a bit silly anyway but um, we've got good signs of potential blooming here. Each one of these is a potential spike. Now this isn't my spike, this was on the plant when I got it and I haven't had it long enough to know its true cycle but what I suspect it does is that when it's a strong healthy plant and it's got canes that haven't yet bloomed they will at the appropriate time which I think is um, early spring. Um, the latest canes may need a year to mature but these new canes have certainly got signs that they may bloom. So I'm probably going out of focus here. The, the nodes are there but maybe these new canes need a year to mature before they can bloom. But on the older part of the plant, there's plenty of nodes on this cane. This cane's already bloomed. That's, uh, that's got two old, three old spikes on it. So you can see the level at which it could bloom. But then there's a node down here that didn't push out last time round. So that could go this time. You never know. Dendrobiums can... Uh, often bloom on older parts of the cane but this cane here hasn't bloomed that's got plenty of nodes this cane here has bloomed but nonetheless there are still nodes so we could anticipate quite a show on this it's one of those that has um, not huge blooms but it, it if it's growing well and it's healthy and it's strong and it's um, does well through the winter, in other words doesn't get soggy or anything like that, um, it should bloom well and the spikes are quite long with a large number of blooms per spike. They're not long lived unfortunately but with any luck if this does bloom I want one of two things. I either want a mass showing <coughs> at the end of March ready to go to our 60th anniversary show or I'd prefer it had a staggered blooming so that the blooms are around for a lot longer. Because if you get a mass blooming on a short-lived blooming plant, it's only there for a couple of weeks and then that's it for another year. So that can be spectacular but short-lived. And sometimes it's better to anticipate many blooms over a much longer period but not all at once but I haven't had it long enough to to know what this is going to do yet but um, it's certainly a large mature plant now it's got its strength in it it's got a hell of a root system underneath it now I see no reason why it shouldn't bloom how well it blooms we'll have to wait and see but that's uh, next year sometime <laughs> just thinking about it next year is not actually that far away is it <laughs> done all your Christmas shopping yet <laughs> <laughs> and then I got sidetracked. What I was wanted to say about this is this would have a drier winter. So it's one of those, you know, if you read up on it, it'll probably say keep drier in winter. But it's got an ER on it. It doesn't say keep dry in winter. This doesn't come from a place where it would get no water. If that was the case, it would be deciduous. And it isn't. Yeah, just that little, little thought. It's the same with um, virtually all dendrobiums, you could say across the board, drier in winter. But that doesn't mean dry. You know, I mean, if you think the Latorias come from the New Guinea area, they don't get a lot of rain in their winter time, but that doesn't mean to say they're not getting any moisture. The humidity is incredibly high. You know, and you, you've got morning dew. The temperatures are a little cooler, but not a lot. So it's not a proper rest, it's not deciduous forest type rest where the light really goes up like that and the rain does go right away and because it's a deciduous forest it's going to be quite a bit cooler in winter. This isn't one of those, it's, it's one of those in between ones, so drier in winter. And what I meant to say was that's just had a good soak, 
Well, that's not drier in winter, is it? But yes, it is. This hasn't long been repotted and it's in large orchiata bark that doesn't stay wet long at all. So all I've done is hydrate it. In a couple of days, that'll be dry again. And I'm watering my pots on around a six or seven day cycle. That won't get watered next time. So that's drier in winter, but not dry. There's a difference. So with this one, I'm keeping it hydrated. It's not getting a lot of food, if any. It depends what I'm up to. You know, I mean, this gets watered in the same cycle as the Oncidium Alliance. Well, they do get feed, fed. They're on a continuous grow cycle. So this one may get some food now and again, even though it's finished growing for the year. But it won't get much. None of my feed levels are that high in the winter. But anyway, you know, watch, watch your dendrobiums. You know, they're, they're, it'll, they'll all probably say drier in winter. But it's just because the rains have eased right off doesn't mean to say the plant's really dry and it really doesn't necessarily mean it's going to need chilling. And you usually find that those that hold their leaves over many years do not need to get cold. Although they may need to get a bit drier in winter. So it's just trying to differentiate. And this should hold it le its leaves many years. Probably three, maybe even four before it the canes become totally deciduous, so not too dry. It'll dump its leaves if it gets too dry, and it'll also dump its leaves if it gets too cold. It's not that type. Anyway, that's that monster out of the way. And I just thought I'd add on, that's why we don't get to see it very often, it's right at the back of that shelf and has many plants in, in its way, and it doesn't get watered on every run. But look where it lives. Yeah, for a part of the day, that's in full sun, straight through the glass. So it's getting as much light as I can possibly give it. And with that light coming through that glass, it warms the plant a bit. Hence the water in the pot. The transpiration rate, loss of hydration through the leaves, during this period now, is high. It's going to lose quite a bit of moisture till that sun moves round. So it needs some down there to replace it. Yeah, so that's, that's where it lives, right up the back, right against the glass. Good light. And if you don't bloom, <laughs> it's going to be trouble. <laughs> okay, I'm going to cut this video off now, but before I sort of end it, um, as I was going through watering today, which you haven't seen all of those clips, um, there's, there's quite a few more to go into another video for another day, but I have put quite a lot to one side. That's a kitchen session. Um, for those of you who are new, the mention of the word kitchen in my videos means either repotting and or mounting. I do all that sort of work out in the kitchen where I've got a work surface at a reasonable height, plenty of space, and a surface that cleans up afterwards rather than because I always make a mess. Um, yeah, so if you ever hear me talk about kitchen time or a kitchen session, it means I'm going to be doing some uh, repotting or potting up or mounting. So just for those who are relatively new. Um, before I end the video, I'll find a little clip of music to go along with it. But as I took a few clips of whole plants, as discussed at the beginning, um, I'll show the sort of thing I might want to do as part of videos in the future, where I'm talking about a plant that's not in bloom. I could introduce this sort of thing. Anyway, see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.